I've been asked to create this video a number of times, so here it is. The best settings for the Sony a7S III for both photography and videography, and if you say that this shouldn't be used for photography, well, you're wrong. Go wash your mouth out. What I'm gonna be going through is the bare minimum that I have set up on this camera for both photo and video, and they are definitely the settings that I would recommend to get the most out of your Sony a7S III, but please, by all means, change them to suit your needs. So video first and let's start with file format. This camera shoots in 4K, so why would you want to shoot in anything else? You want it to be in 4K. You'd be silly not to, wouldn't you? But the question is, which codec of 4K do you want to record in? And there's three different options. We've got XAVC-S, XAVC-HS, and XAVC-SI. XAVC-S is standard H.264, which works on pretty much any computer and you can edit that perfectly fine. And if I'm honest, that's the one I use pretty much 95% of the time. And let me explain why. XAVC-HS is H.265 and some say that the quality is significantly better than H.264 and the file size is considerably smaller than H.264. But if you're shooting in PAL and you need 25 frames a second, well, you're out of luck because the lowest that this camera can go is 50 frames a second in standard movie mode. Now you do have the third option, which is XAVC-SI, which is an all intra codec. In theory, a much better codec to work with and should be significantly better quality than both H.264 and H.265. But the reason I don't use it is because you cannot shoot in an all intra codec in s &Q mode without the use of a CF Express Type A card. With sticking with the theme of the best settings for video, I would recommend going with the all intra codec, but be prepared to put your hand in your pocket to be able to get some nice CF Express Type A cards because they're not cheap. We also want this camera to shoot in a color depth of 10 bit 422 because that's the best you can get out of this camera and that's what we're after. And whilst we're at it, let's make sure that the 10 bit 422 is also carried over into the s &Q mode. Now that's out of the way, it's time to set up the actual shooting mode that we're gonna be using when filming any kind of video. We want full control over this camera. We don't want the camera thinking anything for us in terms of exposure. So first off, we need to make sure that the camera is set up to shoot in manual mode for video. And to do this, you wanna set your exposure control type to PASM mode. And then go up to exposure mode and make sure you select manual. I also use a microphone or some kind of audio device while I'm doing most of my videos. So I want to make sure the audio recording is on, but the actual microphone level will differ depending on what kind of situation I'm recording in. But we can quickly access the audio recording level through the function menu and make adjustments there if we need to. Audio display level, let's get that turned on because we want to see how loud our audio is coming into the camera to make sure we're not peaking any of the audio. This camera has image stabilization, and personally, I think it's one of the best types of image stabilization that I've used on any of the cameras. It's just my personal opinion. Please, please don't hate me in the comments. What I like to use is active stabilization in this camera. You do get a 1.1 times crop, but it doesn't really matter too much. You don't really notice that you've got that 1.1 times crop. And it's really good from anything from 24 millimeter onwards. At 16 mil, you do get a little bit of wobble in the corners, but for the kind of stuff that I do, it doesn't really affect me. Because we're gonna be working with amazing 10-bit footage, we may as well make the most of that and start using S-Log3. It doesn't matter which PP you're using in the pitch profile menu, as long as you set it to S-Log3. A common misconception is that you have to use a particular PP in order to get S-Log3 or s cinetone or any of the other profiles. But that's actually incorrect and I set mine to whatever I want. I'm not gonna go through all of my pitch profile settings, but if you wanna find out, I'll leave a link just up here to a video where I go through everything plus a little bit of secret sauce to do with my pitch profile. Because we're gonna be using S-Log3, I prefer to use Zebras when it comes to correcting my exposure. So we need to make sure our Zebra display is set to on, and when it comes to the Zebras, I set my Zebras to a custom value of plus 91, and I set my second custom Zebra to 73 plus or minus three. But if you wanna find out all the truth, all the nitty gritty stuff to do with why I use Zebras for S-Log3, I'll leave a link to that just up here. For focus modes, we're gonna set it to continuous autofocus because obviously we're shooting in video. Now, if you feel confident enough to shoot manual focus when doing video, then please by all means do, but I find it really hard to pull focus while shooting and making sure that the shot is in focus on the really small screen on the back of the A7S III. Now, if I had an external monitor or I used external monitor a lot, then maybe that would be something I would go down, but the autofocus on the A7S III is pretty damn good 
and I'm really happy with it. So it's one less thing to worry about when I'm doing the shots. For autofocus transition speed, I do set it to seven, which is the fastest, but it's entirely up to you. It depends what style of autofocus that you're wanting. If you want it to smoothly rack between, you know, the foreground and the background, which you can do, then maybe set it to only like one, two or three. But I like something fairly quick because it's a style of shooting that I do. But like I said, change it to whatever suits you. And it's the same thing when it comes to sensitivity. I set mine to four, but like I said, it's entirely up to you. It depends what kind of stuff you're shooting. I also go between two different focus area modes. I go between center fix and also wide. This covers me for pretty much 99% of the work that I do. And I also have this set to a custom button on the back of my camera so I can switch between the two in just a few movements of my thumb. I also make sure that I have eye and face priority set to on. I change the subject to human if I'm shooting humans. That sounds really wrong to say something like that, but if you're photographing or filming humans, then I set it to humans because it's fast and it makes things a lot easier. Three of the last things I do when I'm setting up my Sony A7S III to do any filming is change my shutter speed to start recording for me. Obviously that's down to personal preference and that only happens when I'm in movie mode because obviously I still want to take stills when I'm in photo mode with the shutter button, but yeah. I also go to this little option where you can set different settings for both photo and video. And I make sure that pitch profile, aperture, shutter speed and ISO are all ticked so I can have specific settings for video mode, but as soon as I go into photo mode, them settings stay there and I can make adjustments somewhere else. And then if I need to go back, the exposure is automatically correct. It's something I find really useful when it comes to hybrid shooting or just wanting to work a lot quicker. And finally, I also make sure that I have auto white balance lock assigned to one of my custom buttons on the back. It's really useful if you're shooting in auto white balance mode because obviously as your scene changes or the camera thinks the scene is changing, it may adjust the white balance mid shot. And obviously you don't want that to happen because it looks really unprofessional. So I assign it to one of the buttons, I get my white balance, I can lock it off and take the shot and I don't need to worry about anything changing. Or if I'm staying in a similar scene, it does it throughout the whole scene for me. Everything else in terms of video for this camera is pretty much standard and I've actually transferred most of these settings, which I can, over to my other cameras because it's just so much easier to work with. Now onto photography. The a7S III isn't by far the best camera to use when it comes to photography. It's only got a 12 megapixel sensor and I would much prefer shooting on a 24 megapixel sensor just to give me the ability to do a little bit more cropping in post. With 12, it gets a little bit sketchy at times, but it's manageable as long as you're smart about it. But as long as you don't take into account the actual resolution of the sensor, the A7S III is a really good camera to take photos with. It feels really comfortable. It's really fast to autofocus. All the features about it is amazing. It's just the sensor that lets it down. And I've used it as a photography camera for easily over the last year. Now the settings I'm gonna go through aren't anything groundbreaking, but this video has been asked for, so I'm gonna go through it. First up, we need to make sure that this bad boy is shooting in RAW. JPEG, what's the point in shooting JPEG these days? RAW gives you the most capability when you get it into Lightroom or Photoshop. And whilst you're doing this, make sure that the camera is shooting in uncompressed RAW rather than compressed RAW, because as I've said, you wanna get the most from this camera. Aspect ratio, I obviously set to three to two, and if I want anything different, I will do that in post. I wanna get as much real estate, I guess you could say, out of the camera to begin with. I change the shutter mode to be mechanical, turn off the silent shutter and make sure anti-flicker mode is on. Why? Well, because sometimes when you're not using anti-flicker mode and you're shooting inside, the weird lighting sometimes makes really weird banding like zebra, awful lines across your image. And the last thing you want to do is get back from like a shoot, see all of that and think, well, what do I do now? What do you say to the client? How does it work? I'd be lying if I told you, I've got no idea, but it works and I ain't gonna question it, I ain't gonna complain. Admittedly, you do have to listen to the shutter every time you take a photo, but small price to pay for better quality photos. Steady shot, again, I turn it on. There's no active stabilization when shooting in still mode. It's either stabilization on or off, and I always turn it on. The time I turn it off is when I'm using a tripod, and that's because of a theory I heard ages ago saying that if you have stabilization on and use a tripod, the camera automatically thinks that there's some kind of um, stabilization or something going on, uh, or it needs to add the stabilization. And if you're taking a long exposure, sometimes it can actually make your images blurry. 
I don't actually know whether that's a real thing. I've got no idea. I don't know whether it's in the older cameras or not, but it's something I've always stuck by. So yeah, just turn it on. And for most of your photos, you'd be fine. I also like to make sure that my autofocus isn't enabled when I'm pressing the shutter button to do any photography, which means I have to press the AF on button on the back of the camera to be able to lock any kind of focus when shooting in still mode. To do this, I need to go into the focus setting menu and make sure that autofocus with shutter is set to off. One final thing that I've done is if I'm shooting stills in aperture priority mode, I've gone into the menus and set my ISO range between 40 and 20,000 ISO. And just below that, I've set my ISO auto minimal shutter speed to one over 250th of a second. That really is the bare minimum I'd ever want to go when shooting any kind of photography. But obviously if you're shooting a different type of photography than what I do, you may want to change that shutter speed to suit your subject. This means that when I go into aperture priority mode, I can set my ISO to auto ISO. Then all I need to do is adjust the aperture to suit my subject. And then finally adjust the exposure value compensation wheel on the top of the camera to suit my scene to make sure it's exposed correctly. The camera does the rest of the thinking for me and allows me to concentrate on taking the photos in a busy, stressful environment, such as weddings. And that's it, setting up the Sony A7S III so I can get maximum output from it isn't actually that hard. The menu options inside the Sony cameras can be a little daunting, not gonna lie, but actually most of the settings, especially when it comes to stills, actually only come into effect if you're shooting in JPEG. If you have any little secrets about your Sony A7S III, or even if you've learned something today, let me know down in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video, it really helps me out. If you wanna see more content like this, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you do, I'll see you right there. Thanks for watching.